Welcome to the Globetrotter Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Chris Paxton. Uh, side-loaded mic, so you talk into the okay, right about the Marantz okay, logo. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Chris is a senior research scientist in NVIDIA who's worked at a bunch of other places. Uh, second time coming on the podcast. Chris, welcome to the pod. Hey, glad to be here. Glad to have you here. Yeah. So before we start recording, we're like, all right, what are we allowed to talk about and what we aren't? And so... I think we got this down, but if we don't, we will edit the fuck out of it. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. So one thing we were talking about is I was in Seattle last weekend, which is like where yep. you came from before this. Sort of. Yeah. Be- Via. It's one of the steps on the yeah. way to Pittsburgh. Yeah. What, what, the, when were you there? Like, tell, me, was, tell me about that. I was in Seattle from 2018 through 20, through like fall of 2019 nice. so i got here to pittsburgh three months before the pandemic started so that was good were you doing yeah. nvidia stuff there as well yeah, yeah okay that makes sense yeah it's the same thing just transfer yeah so it was uh what was it yeah so i was a research scientist there in seattle we started out in a we started out in a startup hall in like a like a co-working kind of space with That's a bunch awesome. of startups and things like this yeah it's a it's a fun experience yeah it's yeah. a yeah uh, by the university just right by the university of washington so nice. yeah. so a lot of that was actually working with like the students there and so on so yeah, and um, post like researchers at the university, so it's a very collaborative kind that of environment. Is, I'm yeah. looking at bringing in maybe some students for. Well, no, I have a student in for yeah. something I'm doing. I might <laughs> bring in some more students. Yeah, it's it's fun only having a master's degree and bringing in PhD students. I will say, yeah. No. Every time, every basically every time that I work with students, I am blown away by how much more hardworking students are than I was in college. Oh, for sure. And there's, so there's, there's a lot of brilliant people. And yeah. like, sometimes you get somebody that's a student where you're like, holy crap, this person is amazing. Yeah, right. I don't they're know. They're going to take over the world. Like, yeah. yeah. They're going to be CEO within six years of graduating. Right. I don't know. And then sometimes you meet a student where you're like, this person is a bag of dicks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Definitely, there's def- there's a range. But I don't know. I think on balance, though, there's some really, yeah, it's nice. I don't know. That's yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah. and it does feel good to to give somebody hopefully some mentorship they appreciate sometimes. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to tell. I feel like you get a mix so of Yeah, most students I think are grateful for, for right. direction and, and insight from someone that's been out in the industry a little longer. Occasionally, you get a student that's like, and I was like this when I was a student to my discredit, mm. but I thought I knew everything. Like I was like. You know, like, I don't need to hear from you, you old man. You know, like, talking to anybody that had been doing it for, you know, I don't think I've ever gotten that reaction. Than me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have gotten it maybe once or twice, yeah. and I have given it because I was I was not the nicest dude when I was a student. And so the cynic in me sees that side, but right. then, you know, the part of me that volunteers to teach high school kids about robotics and is yeah. on board for Brandeis and, yeah, you know, good. tries to be nice yeah. to people and takes people under his wing, sees the other right. Like right now, um, yeah. one of my um, teachers from high school just got his master's degree in um, data science. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I've been helping him with his resume and a bunch of stuff just because it's like, well, you helped me back in the day. Yeah, cool. You know, happy to help you. That's cool. That's a huge shift to, to do late in life, I guess. I assume. I don't know. He's maybe in Not his 40s. Yeah, yeah. Right. Fair enough. Not that way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. But, hey, he, was, he was like one of the nicer teachers at boarding school. So I'm like, I want to help that guy back. Yeah. That's cool. That's good. Yeah. I don't know. It's a nice career move, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, so okay, so I'm a robotics research scientist, which is actually pretty yeah. different from a from a da- from data science, I would say. So I think that right, like my day, what, what I do, and I guess we talked about this last time, so yeah. hopefully not too boring, right? Is like writing, working on papers, and working on projects, and working with interns and students, especially in, on on projects and things like that, and some amount of like writing software, right? Like, yeah. I'm, like, half of a software engineer. That's, like, not much, a, not a very good software engineer, you would say. But no, I mean, I'm fine. I'm just yeah. being self-deprecating. No, nah, I mean, like, no, I'm doing. just doing that the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so anyway, right. Uh, but, okay. That's cool, though, that you're still doing that. Like, because I, yeah. I haven't written a paper in forever, but I'm hiring scientists right now, and I feel like it's a very different mentality than engineers. It definitely is. I feel like, yeah, because, like, of course, hiring scientists a lot. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's different things that you look for, I guess. I don't know. I don't know much about the flip side, about hiring engineers. So there's the... I mean, 
I feel like scientists can tell you how to do a thing that's never been done before, and engineers can do a thing really reliably. Yeah. Uh, they can tell you how they think you can probably do something that you can't do that's never been done before. That's a very different question. Interesting. <laughs> right. So, like, okay. Right. So one of the things I'm working on now is coming up with um, a small anodization lab to practice some new techniques for mm -hmm. masking off bits of aluminum that are being anodized. So it's like a yeah. surface coating. Um, basically what you do is you take aluminum, you dip it in sulfuric acid, yeah. you put um, an anode, which is a positive bit from a power supply on the aluminum, and then you take a cathode, which is a negative bit from a power supply, and you put that somewhere in the acid bath. So usually you have some things that dangle down in, and you've got a metal container, and that's how it connects. And I know very little about chemistry. So Yeah, that's I don't um, know anything. Although about I've learned it. a bunch. I know, I know the yeah. words sulfuric acid and hexavalent chromium. Yeah. I think those are bad. You don't drink those. You, you don't, don't want to you don't, don't want to drink those, those or get them on your skin. splash them on your friend's face. So. Yeah. All right. So I, I know that about them. that's more yeah. or less exhausting my chemistry knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> that's I've learned so much in the last two weeks. Like it's it's amazing. Yeah. Well I'm you know, I, I still am not a chemistry expert, and I'm very reliant on on other people for this work. But yeah, I'm. It's amazing how much more more motivated I am to learn it. You right. know, in in a career than I was in school. <laughs> and yeah, so... I mean, it's always fun to learn different things. I feel like that's part of the fun of being in a like. I mean, you are also in kind of a bleeding edge kind of field, right? And that's 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 like what a lot of robotics is like right now. I feel like well, and like, robotics is yeah. interesting because you get to do shit in so many different areas right so like robotics covers yeah. agriculture chemistry yeah um machining in the case of form logic mm -hmm. um i don't know like um medical stuff like surgery surgery yeah, that stuff in college yeah. at school I mean, yeah you know the, yeah no i mean they, yeah no i think this is great there's tons of stuff like this i feel like the other thing um what was i going to say about about it no, so robotics is a really cool field. It's also changing a lot. The one thing that I was going to say, since since it's topical today, did you see the Tesla learning call? I did not. What uh, happened? Uh, Elon Musk says that the most important product that his company is working on now is that humanoid robot. Did that take the share price, or did? It, did I don't it know. I didn't it? check actually. I I don't know. I feel like people have enough faith in him to be like, sure, Elon, that's probably right. Like, all right, I don't know. What was his logic behind it? So I think the logic is it, the logic is actually really relevant to everyone. So the so the idea is that um, well, I'll go into that. But the, so the idea yeah. is that um, a lot of I, I'm I'm struggling to remember his exact quote, but it was something about how there's like a lot of capital is just concentrated labor and how you need to have and how like we need uh, how how important human labor is and all this stuff, right? Like the basically you know, the usual things, right? We should be able to automate more stuff, right? And sure. it, it will mean that there is more that there is more stuff available in the economy and like more stuff for everybody. I don't know that right? I agree. The right vehicle pitch. to do that is humanoid, uh, but oh yeah, well yeah. yeah, sure, I agree with you there. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a nice bit. It's a nice idea in principle. Oh, you can yeah disagree with whatever, but yeah, I think it's I think it's it's interesting to think about, right? So like so this is one of the things that's interesting about robotics right now, right? Because like we are in a place where we are not going where the world the developed world is aging, right? We're not going to have people to take care of people or do jobs where like there is this whole labor shortage thing right because oh, like, i was just trying to, to get better jobs service right. chemists to come out of retirement and join my team right exactly <laughs> no we're running out of these kinds of things well yeah. okay i feel like you can't you're not going to be able to automate a service chemist i think but i don't think elon's robot's going to automate that but yeah anyway that is it's it's interesting to see more people jumping into this kind of thing though because there's a yeah Right, it's an it's a it's a good moment I think to be in robotics, which we've talked about before. But yeah, it's for sure. a it's a it's, a, it's an agree. exciting time, right? Yeah, like the other thing is that like this <laughs> all this AI stuff is finally kind of paying off in my opinion. Like there's, oh, there's cool stuff on the what horizon. Have you seen? Well, I mean, I'm not saying that anything. This is like there's still you're still a long way away from being able to have a robot in your house that can do stuff, right? Yeah. But there's there's particularly some cool stuff, like another thing that uh, OpenAI has been announcing some new language stuff today, right? But basically, we're getting robots that are better at understanding uh, the world around them and about objects and how things interact and what they can do and how to how to kind of make decisions about the world, right? So like, we're still very far from all these things. I'm not going to say that you're going to have like your like robot butler in like two years or anything like that or ten even. But I've been like, hearing that word robot like, butler like yeah. since grad school. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's. I mean, it's what. Well, since undergrad, like, I should say. Like the Jetsons or Isaac Asimov or yeah, whoever, like point. these guys have been around. So like people have been talking C3PO. about this since before we were. Right, right. Like yeah. the ro the word robot is from a from a play from the 30s, right? Like it's like a Czech play. I've heard about this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, maybe not Czech. I, I'm probably going to, or 
I don't know, somewhere in Eastern Europe. I thought it was Russian, which is how much of a moron I am. I don't, it might be Russian. Send all complaints to podcast this gay. That's yeah. I'm sorry that I don't know where this is from. Yeah. It's like Rossin's robots or something like this. But yeah. anyway, but the point is, people have been thinking about that. It's funny because the Czechs like and the Russians fucking hate each other. <laughs> so. all, I, all I know is that it's some Slavic kind of ish. And I don't even, maybe I shouldn't even get into that. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's somewhere out there. It's somewhere out, somewhere east of where I am right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The Atlantic Ocean. Right. <laughs> past that. Somewhere past that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but so, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. People have been dreaming about this forever, but like, there's all these little things that we can't do yet. Right. So that's the, I don't know. Yeah. yeah hopefully. For sure. Hopefully. Dreaming about it, I guess. But yeah. No, nah, I mean, I'm with you. And it's, it is a buttload of work to make all that stuff go. Yeah. And I mean, as, as someone who's doing it from a different angle and, right. um, I don't know. Sometimes it's really intimidating to see like how much there is to be done before that tunnel's finished getting dug. And then other times, you know, you're like, wow, they dug that tunnel. That's impressive. Right. That's awesome. I'm really glad they did that. You know, <laughs> and like then sometimes right. you're like, holy crap, I was able to do that. That's that's right. incredible. Right. And so Yeah. yeah. But, well, yeah. You're I... look back on something you accomplished and like be like, how the fuck did I get that done? <laughs> <laughs> good luck <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah coffee coffee oh. late nights yeah a lot yeah. of that stuff yeah right exactly right i don't know yeah i mean i think the other thing that i feel like is exciting that maybe is probably less exciting to you which is always interesting to talk is that for me as a software person i'm very glad that robots are now getting like commoditized like i <laughs> and just go to the you can go to the store like if you have to spare fifty thousand dollars and buy some robots right like That's you can't cool. you can't do that you can buy a bunch for 50 grand with consumer robots huh yeah right like they're grinning. i mean you, i still think they're get far. a buttload of roombas <laughs> yeah oh sure yeah but i'm still like robots that can do stuff like a Roomba. Yeah. i mean a Roomba is useful but like that's like what are they it's not versatile yeah they're like the the little robot vacuums are like a couple hundred bucks now which is incredible yeah i but just like, got my mom one for her birthday this year yeah, right those are great uh yeah. but uh, huge fantastic robot definitely the most successful consumer the robot. second robot vacuum i bought my parents and it's just my go-to gift now it's a good gift they're useful no one you can never have too many robot vacuums right yeah I agree. Okay, one per floor of your house at least right so <laughs> that's fine yeah yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now they've got that one that can like suck stuff out. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, there's there's some incredible ones. Like there was one. Speaking of good students, there was one student who I was interviewing a couple. It was like a year or two ago. Yeah. Who was like an intern who got an internship. Thank thankfully, because who was like, yeah. So I started. A, I founded a startup where we have where we build a, a floor mopping robot that will go and clean your floor. It's Narwhal Robotics. You can look them up. And they and then they and then it'll go. It'll clean the floor and then it'll go back and like dip, like empty its own tank and refill. Oh, cool. yeah, like incredible. Like I don't know. Really cool stuff. Yeah. That's but, awesome. Uh, yeah. But there, so anyway, but I think that there's a bunch of stuff like this that uh, it's exciting, exciting to see. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's a good time to be there. Um, yeah. And I've just been focused on the machine tool industry, but consumers, right. that's a, that's a dilly of a pickle because there are, <laughs> sorry, dilly of a pickle. <laughs> um, it's, it's great because, um, cost driving that down means that you're relegated to like, I say dog shit sensors, but right. more difficult to get good data out of, of sensors. And so you really, really are reliant on algorithms and mm -hmm. filters and I don't know, probably data science to some extent, although I don't fully understand that. And the voodoo yeah. magic of software to make right. it all work. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's a and that's the interesting thing, right? So we've we've talked about this, right? About how yeah. there's there's a couple of consumer robots that I think are really good. Like, or not consumer robots, I should say, but like robots out there, mobile robots, commercial robots that are like, they're in the twenty to $30,000 range, yeah. right? So like the price of a car, right? The clear path, uh, John Sadonsky or? Uh, the ones that I'm thinking of are Hello Robot and yep, there's one by that. Unitree, I think. Like there, there's a couple of these companies that are that are building robots and are mobile manipulators are pretty cheap, right? Yeah. Like, and this is, so this is all incredible, right? So like you can have a robot that, and like, now, which is the problem, of course, is that twenty, thirty thousand dollars is not cheap. It's extremely expensive. Yeah, yeah, well, it's it's, it's <laughs> right. a nice car, man. You know, it's one of my cars worth. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a new car. Yeah, yeah, it's a new car. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. I mean, you can get like I think a 
You can get Toyotas for less than that. No, nah, yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I think my my wife's Corolla was twenty thousand dollars. There you right? go. When, when it was new, when it was new, right? So like, there's like sixty six percent of of a robot. Yeah, 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 right. So, but so that's that's still pretty expensive. Like, if you wanted to have a robot that you could like put in someone's house, like let's say you wanted to be able to take care of someone, right? Like, just like clean... whiskey. It's very yeah. good. Okay, sounds good. Cheers. Cheers. So like, um, so like cleaning up something like that, right? or whatever it is right you probably want it to be like a tenth of that price at most right that's so how do you, you get to sell units for sure now and of course all this stuff will get easier to scale with scale right yeah and Kazi's company and the, like the, there's the limiting factor of like me our ai still isn't key as much as i'm optimistic still isn't good enough right yeah right so yeah but how do you make how do you make it cheap enough it's an interesting question i do not know anything about that this is why I told you. You actually build. You actually time. build things at least. I don't know how to build things. Yeah, but happen. I don't know how to fucking program things. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to make AIs make lower quality tech viable. I mean, that's to me that's interesting because that's so far outside of what I do. Right. And we we've talked about this a bunch because we're very good friends. But I feel like I mean, yeah, uh, you know. But I I feel like we don't talk about like the nitty gritty details of what we do super often because. Right. We do such different things that mm -hmm. the common language isn't super duper right. uh like our venn diagram is, yeah. is not the largest in terms right. of the middle of it so yeah so yeah i'm like from my right so i think the, the more that i think about this like so like i yeah i'm a software person i've also gone through a pretty long route to get to the place i am in software and robotics like just within because I, I don't know because you probably don't have much in, oh, insight on this maybe i don't know but like robotics so they, there used to be all of these like more old school robotics, and I know you've had people on the, on your on your show and have talked yeah, to people well, who know this kind of stuff. One of them. <laughs> right? This is like we have models for everything. We have methods. We have slant. We have we will we'll, like do, oh, do localization, like all of this yeah. kind of stuff. Like yeah. lots of sensors that and really precise cool. sensors, and like everything is really well calibrated and all of this kind of stuff. And that just like the more you, the more I think about it, the less. And that I used to be more in that on that camp, right? But yeah. the more I think about it, the more like there's just no way this can be out. Right, I, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that that stuff can actually deliver like a robot that can go out and not like, the consumer you know, level. Pass. Yeah, yeah, because you need you need a robot that is like robust enough to like things not being calibrated or like I don't know, its arm not moving to the right position because like someone well, ran into it. I don't know. How do you? You yeah. wouldn't not calibrate at all. It would self calibrate. I would think. Yeah, I I think it, it depends on how you imagine it, right? Because like also, so how do people? Do, so okay, here here's a story. It goes goes back to so in grad school, they did a little bit of stuff with surgical robots. So these old Da Vinci's, right? Now the interesting thing about them is if you try to do inverse kinematics, like position control for these things, right? You find out that it's actually really hard because there's because all this there's all these compounding errors, right? So you get like two a centimeter uh, numbers are wrong. I'm making centimeter. I, I, okay. Uh, Again, the numbers are wrong. <laughs> don't there goes the spleen. <laughs> yeah, but there's, no, but, well, that's the interesting thing, right? They don't. They clearly do not. <laughs> they clearly yeah. are not a centimeter off. Well, right? they're also teleoperated, so the human exactly. compensates. That's a right. The human, does, the human does visual servo to do everything. And yeah. like, if you think about it, like, if you close your eyes and like, I'm going to reach forward to like some particular position, you're probably going to be off. And you're, or if I try to reach for this, I'm going right? to touch that. Yeah, you're going to adjust as you move, right? Oh shit! I was off by a centimeter. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah see yeah exactly so like that's the thing right so the, the we we are our hardware is much better than any robot that we will see in the next 10 years right probably sure, i is. would say right yeah so uh, uh, yeah it is isn't. it isn't <laughs> yeah I mean, maybe not for some specific job for, for doing any but for versatile. general purpose yes. autonomy right yep. the human body yep, is a much better robot Agreed. than any robot we will see in a very very long time well the fact right. that i mean yeah. humans still have to be able to access everything to fix it when it breaks yeah. is proof positive of that well we're very bad at fixing internal issues here but no sorry yeah it's but external we got this yeah right yeah. <laughs> i can fix that robot over there yeah Right. Now let me smoke yeah. this cigarette. Right. <laughs> and meaning no insult to Tesla's new robot, but there, there's no way that we're getting this in 10 years, right? We're getting, we're getting robots that are anywhere as capable. But well, nor do I know why you would want to choose humanoid as your form factor, because there are so many... I think it teaches you a lot, because I think it's hard. Like, I think, honestly, right? I don't I don't know what's going on inside their heads, right? Why they're planning this. I don't think it's the right form factor, personally. But, like, of course, right? We've talked about that kind of thing. Yeah. But, like, uh, but I think that it's... I don't, also don't know. So my yeah. my perspective is different than yours because yeah. I'm not looking for. My reason why I don't think it's the right form factor is I think you're looking for. I would rather have a purpose built device to do a thing than have a one thing that can do everything. Yeah. 
Um, it sounds like you think that there can be one thing that can do everything, but there's a better form than a human. Well, so I think that I think that humans add in a whole bunch of extra problems that make make your life unnecessarily hard. I do think that like we've designed our entire world around humans. Of course, the human form factor is going to be better if you want a general purpose robot, right? I think that's I think that's probably true. But it, but a robot doesn't have to do everything people can do to be useful and still reasonably general purpose, right? That's my opinion on it. And so if we have something like uh, like so so here's the concern right so if you're developing if you if, you, if a human if a humanoid robot makes a mistake and falls over and like okay what's going to happen i mean a humanoid robot is nowhere near as robust as we are right it's going to break immediately <laughs> right that's what's going to happen right so um it's, and like everything we do like even even things like opening a, f a heavy door or something we'll like lean our whole body to do that right Ooh. Or yeah, or right. So there's all yeah. this kind of stuff where you you do like full body dynamic control of everything, like which is which is to say like I don't know 50 degrees of freedom, right? Let's say something Holy like shit. this, right? Yeah. The human, like I'm just guessing, right? So we got seven for the arms and a bunch for fingers and all this, right? So we got then we you got your legs and all like I, yeah, you got like okay, it's a lot. <laughs> so maybe two for my thought. Well, plus I can do this. That's three. Right. Four, five, six. Okay, so each finger has three degrees of freedom. One, two, three, four, five times three is 15, times two is 30, plus 14 is. And you got your legs six. too, or another seven. Each. This is way more than 50. Yeah. <laughs> do the eyes count? <laughs> I don't think they I do. Mean, That's a sense I think, of. I think they kind of do. Well, the, I mean, what the we neck do. Count? But we do full body. We do full body planning, right? So, so like, count, I need so to move my head one, and my eyes to be able to two, find to see a clue to three, the top. So yeah, you do all of it. Yeah, and then you've got you've got four, a few in your torso. You've got yeah, right. So yeah, point is it's a lot. Yeah. So like okay, uh, but the, well, that's a fun one, tangent. But, two, right. three, you can reach any yeah. four, right? Five, six, and then fifteen more for the toes. Figuring they work the same as fingers, which might be wrong, but I, don't I think they're sure. yeah. I, don't, I think they're. I think toes aren't quite as good as fingers, but it's tough, right? To see. I mean, you like figure they probably can spread out and go in and out, and then have another like this can do this, but it can also do this. So toes can probably do all that shit too. Yeah. So you've got thirty plus thirty plus fourteen plus another whatever the hell this is. Yeah, we'll say seven because I wasn't counting, even though I should have been. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you've got <laughs> right. So you've got forty-four times two equals eighty-eight plus your fucking neck, which is like another four. Right. Um, we'll say one, two, three, four. Um, so you've got ninety-two. Plus, I'm probably not thinking of like, do your abs count? I mean, I yeah, think, they must. I think to be honest, every muscle that you can control is going to be is going to count, which is to say, this is quite a lot. Right. But your eyes can't like, count though, because you don't count a set a, like a pan tilt camera as a degree. Of but yes, you do like, because you do? well, you can because uh, because if you're doing this kind of planning, right? What we are the problem that you're trying to solve is is also partially observable, right? Meaning that we don't we don't have full information about the world. This is something that often does not show up in a lot of robotic settings, right? Because you have lots, you instrument everything. So you actually have full state, right? But but if you're but if you're talking about your general purpose robot, no, you've actually got in a, you actually do have to plan for like, I need to be able to gather enough information about this object to be able to manipulate it, right? So like if I'm, let's say, think about the difficulty of having a humanoid robot open a fridge and get out something that's in the back, right? Yeah. I have to walk totally up there. I probably am I'm going to, first of all, the walking isn't trivial, but although we're pretty good at that now, then there's like grabbing it and pulling it. And you use your, that's, that's another whole body yeah. planning. Yeah. And now you're going to go in and grab, you're going to look, grab, look around and be like, okay, so now I've got to move this stuff out of the way to see the thing that I want. And there I'm going to be controlling my eyes and head to figure out like exactly where I should go. Sort of like we, we don't think about this stuff, right? We kind of reason at a bunch of levels of abstraction, <laughs> right? But like, if you want to look at something over there without moving your head, you clearly, you can, which means that is the degree of freedom that I'm controlling, right? That's a good point. So, yeah. Uh, so we have, so we have all of this extra information, right? Or so, sorry, where were we before we went on this tangent? I like this tangent, but I'm, I'm right. happy to go back. I can't remember, okay. <laughs> well, so I think, I think the point I was trying to make- You got your body, which is 50 degrees of freedom, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this, yeah. My, I think my point yeah. was that making that humans were unnecessarily. I think my point was that it was unnecessarily complicated. Right, it's that a was, lot of motors. Yeah, it's a lot of motors, right? And like until you can really solve all of these other problems, right? 
really reliably. Like not not like ninety nine percent of the time or ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Like Tesla hasn't is doing this as Tesla, and that Elon hasn't just spun out another company to make this. I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing to think about, right? Like why not spin out another company? Um, you might hope that a lot of the same infrastructure will apply. Presumably, not knowing anything about this, about what's going on again, but like. I could imagine that you're looking at something like... I think it's Honda and Toyota, like robots that they're they working do. on, too. They do, correct, yeah. Toyota's, Toyota's robotics lab is, is a really good one, actually. They're, they're really trying cool. to play in that field. Um, that, that's, I think that's reasonable, because like in the end, a self-driving a, a car, a modern car, is, it going, is a robot, right? Like It's a fairly simple one yeah. a lot of the time. But Even like, a non-self-driving at this point, I mean, to yeah. some extent. Any new car now has things like lane, lane assist and like emergency stopping and all of this, right? Which means that any new car is at least a very simple robot, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so, and so I could see you saying that like, all right, we've got to get into this. We're in this space. Uh, we have a lot of the same infrastructure is shared, right? Like this is how you train models and collect data, right? Uh, we have a lot of the same, we need a lot of expertise and hardware for both of them to do it right. Right, like Toyota's got their robots that they build. Now Toyota, though, is, do, do, is doing this in a way that I think is more measured and insane, and which maybe tracks for their reputation as two different auto companies because they have like little, uh, little cheap robots with just a manipulator arm on them that are fairly, fairly simple, right? And they also have nicer, fancier ones that they work on. So they've got a spectrum, right? Nice. Yeah. Right. So that's right. Which I think is. I haven't seen their product up close, if I'm being honest. So. It's not a product. I think I don't know if they sell the things, but I think they're working uh, on them. A product is a broad term. I okay. Think it can also, <laughs> like Boston Dynamics has product. And they don't yeah. Sell. Boston Dynamic is the other example, though, right? Like, so they use the same. They use or they their control stack that they use for those for the Atlas for the humanoids, has to my. To, I think that it's 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 evolved into the ones that they're using for these. They announced a couple of days ago that they were doing their big collaboration with DHL, which is a logistics company, right? So they're so the robots are out there. Now. DHL's got everyone and their mom working for them right now. It seems. <laughs> well, I mean, I think uh, warehouse automation is a big thing. People are excited about. Oh it. yeah, of course it is. Yeah, uh, logistics automation. I want my Amazon package now. Right. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How are you gonna do that? Oh, wow. right. Um, figure it out, guy. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, you know, so, and in the end, us being able to, all of us being able to get our shit, like, delivered cheaper and faster is probably good, but for right. sure, as long as it doesn't come at a human I'm not against it. I was talking to somebody the other day, I was having um, a coffee, and they referred to themselves as a space communist, which that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> also from Seattle, well, more from Seattle That's than right. they live there for life, <laughs> but it was, it was pretty funny just to hear that, that take on it, like, well, yeah. I'm a space communist. <laughs> like, what? Uh, yeah. yeah. Got to get a... Right. I mean, Earth nihilist. Automate everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's okay. it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's Seattle it. Space News, right? The, uh, what's it? Jeff Bezos' company bought a, bought a robotics, space robotics company, too. Actually? Yeah, they bought Honeybee Robotics. They, they, Wait, they bought Honeybee? Yeah. Fucking Keel must be, like, fucking... Balling out or of Arbang or something like this. It was on. It yeah. was on. Yeah, I saw it on Twitter. But <laughs> Kill Davis was the dude that tried to hire me there, like a while. Yeah. Or like, but it, there was so little money, I couldn't do it out of school. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I he, don't... he offered everybody. Uh, I probably shouldn't say the dollar. Well, I never signed the NDA. I could. Yeah, why not? I don't know. It was sixty-seven thousand dollars, like right out of school. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, it wasn't horrible, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I had better offers, so I didn't take it. Yeah. It's a cool, I mean, they do cool stuff, right? They, they yeah. contracted for curiosity. Well, right? I think that's it. it. It's so interesting that you, yeah. the money doesn't matter. You just yeah. do it based on. Right. So. Yeah. And if Blue Origins ever able to send something to space, then they'll be able to send you know, honeybee robots up there too. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah for sure. No. When I have a bunch of friends that have worked there, I Hopefully mean, they'll, I, be, I, they'll be able to. Yeah. Sorry. Should get someone on the pod. Um, you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. that's cool stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, right. So there, now you're caught up on my Twitter feed for this week. So that's, awesome. that's all the news. So <laughs> I, I, I should get Twitter <laughs> based on what you're saying. I, I don't know. This is this is yeah. my mind comp, as they say in my show. <laughs> I'm Jewish. <laughs> don't cancel me. <laughs> but um, I've been trying to debate as to whether or not I should get Twitter because... 
I don't think it's good for my mental health. You're saying it's great for promotions. I'm not saying it's good for your mental health, to be clear. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But 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 your your selling point is valid, and I mean, not everything I do is good for my mental health. I do a lot of stuff, but you know, it's I do it because it needs to be done. And so I don't know. I don't know if I should look at this that way or not. It's also interesting because I feel like it's taken up as a scientist. It's taken up. I've mean, told you this before, but it's taken up a lot of the the role that for me that conferences used to play and yeah. teaching and learning this kind of stuff and learning about papers. Because since something happened back in twenty twenty, we have been able to go to many conferences. Yeah, I meant so, that. Yeah, right. Which has used to be where you you know meet people and learn all kinds of stuff, right? So yeah, yeah. it's interesting, Matt. Yeah. Well, so like I, I was trying to crack virtual expos. Um, yeah in q4 of 2020 uh sk sponsored four of them and we had zero return on that investment um so there might be something to be said for this twitter thing (laughs) virtual conferences and i this might be a somewhat controversial opinion are not good they're terrible i would agree with that controversial they are no i don't think it's very controversial somebody that spent you know like quite a bit of money uh, on them you know and, and time some and good, some this bad. This whole office is based around virtual conferences, as you can see. And uh, yeah, tremendous waste of coin. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There are definitely, there are, there are good ways to do them. There are better ways to do them. I've definitely been to some that I thought were pretty good. But they're, they're, I don't think I've been to one that I thought was ever better than a real conference. <laughs> I agree. Um, um, I've never even no been offense. to one that I thought was <laughs> pretty good. Well, the best one I think I went to was ASME's Inspection and Maintenance Robot Summit. And it wasn't great, but it was better than all the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> so... I think, yeah. There were a couple, like, I thought, uh, what was it? There was a, the conference on robot learning, and which I went to recently. It was pretty good. I thought that was a great one. Despite, that was hybrid, actually, but I, I actually know, missed virtual that. Half. What was that? It's a it's a very small conference. It's actually it's I I would consider it now one of the premier robotics conferences that you do for learning. Oh, cool. At least, and it's um, we had a few papers there, a bunch, and uh, but they were, thank you. But like the the um, yeah. So so we talk about stuff there. The stuff that we we present there is mostly about like kind of. Oh, a lot of the, the the broad strokes are similar to what we talked about, like how you teach robots how to manipulate how to manipulate with the world and interact with the world. And how you get build representations and ways that the robot can think about problems so that you can do all of this right and i think there was a lot of really cool stuff there makes sense um, yeah right yeah all software of course because uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this like, one's all spicing board <laughs> some <laughs> like some of them aren't some of them aren't some of them have non-software stuff in them yeah but yeah yeah i'm but... a hardware douche so <laughs> i mean I'm like, i do think a lot of the there are a lot of important problems to solve in hardware I, I do believe that. I just don't know anything about them. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it's it's fun. Like, there's... Well, the thing is, like, the software technology is newer, admittedly, so it's a little bit more exciting from that perspective. Hardware, I mean... Well, if you look at mechanical, I mean, we've had that since the first person invented a wheel, you know? I mean, when were harmonic drives invented? I thought they just came out of patent. Did they? Are they out of patent? I think that they must be, right? I mean, they must they've be. been around for a long time. Man, yeah. see this. This just shows how little I know about how robots actually work. I don't. I don't. Know uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. When harmonic, now, now you're now you're getting me to question mine because I don't know when harmonic drives were invented. I know we learned about them in grad school, which right. might have been like nine years I mean, ago. Right, but I thought I thought they were I thought they were they were probably out of patent by then. But I thought like recently, meaning like in the scheme of things, right? Like whereas like neural nets were invented in the fifties or something like seventies. I guess that's recent. You look yeah. Right. Like. So, uh, yeah, they didn't work until recently. No, they worked, but not well. Not like as well as they do now. But yeah. like, that's interesting. My point is, I feel like we actually have, my opinion, as someone who knows nothing about hardware, is that we actually have quite a long way to go at getting, like, if you want that general purpose robot, right? Like, think about how much more energy efficient a human is. Well, here's right? another thing to think about, robot. right? So, like, when you just said that, I'm like, well, everybody talks about making shitty hardware good with bad software, but what about making better hardware? with better manufacturing techniques. Well, I don't think that you can do, I think that you still need the, I, I don't think you can do this with just like better hardware, right? I don't think, like, I think that there are still these fundamental issues that we talked about when we were talking about the human, like opening a, in the fridge, right? Like there's all these problems of observability and information that you just, sure. I just you just like cannot get around this problem purely by well, hardware. Here's what I right? think. 
Yeah. And that's that it all needs doing. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff to be done. Right. And so, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit bearish on the idea that you can just take total dog shit, like a motor that doesn't really work and a gear that's broken <laughs> and, and like an IMU that drifts by, you know, like right. five degrees every minute. And, and you can somehow get that to work with machine learning. Like, I'm a little bit bearish on that idea because I haven't necessarily seen it go correctly right. yet. I mean, I think that's a good so, point, actually. But I, I think that what you mean by good hardware is going to change, right? Because, like, so go back to the, the surgical robot example, right? Like, there, there are certain things. Like, you might you might think of it as being, like, incredibly precise, right? Like an industrial robot. If I buy, a, like, a KUKA or a universal robot industrial arm, right? Well, be... KUKA more than you are. <laughs> sure. sure. But still, no, but, they, but their precision, their repeatability is extremely good, right? Especially compared to a human, right? So... Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, I think that, that the, this is they're they're incredibly good bl at just like blindly re going to a single position, right? And if you if you consider that to be good hardware, then I think that the answer is probably like again, I love those robots. Those are ones that I've used for most for my entire career. But but like that, I do not think is the route is necessarily the route to putting a robot into like a home environment, right? Like there, it just has a different list of requirements. So maybe maybe those do, maybe it does include those, but it might not, right? So. Yeah, how that know. makes sense. Yeah, I and I think that a lot of them are going to be things like, uh, yeah, like I mean, responsiveness and safety around people and things like this, right? And there, there are people building these collaborative robots that are kind of looking at these kinds of things too, right? Uh, there's, there's uh, one thing that matters, like just like power draw, right? I, like the robot probably shouldn't have to plug itself in every five minutes, which is not really going to be a, possible with like a. Kuka or Franca arm. Challenging. Yes. <laughs> not enough five minutes, you know. But like, because like, of course, they sell all well, those I know what you meant. Like, yeah. it, uh, I mean, like, I'm, it, five hours, whatever, three hours. So, one time people yeah. would need all these to be worth it is if you want the dynamic yeah. and the speed that you would like for it to be able to do right. well, dynamic shit. Like, well, without it weighing as much as a car, too, right? Like, yeah. you got to have a lot of, you, you can make anything last long enough with enough batteries, but yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And enough money and enough exotic alloys and not, you know, I mean, there's so many right. things. Right. Yeah. So I think the definition of what is good hardware and good software is going to change as the tools change as it, I guess, always has, but you know, right. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and so, I mean, I, I, you've kind of got me thinking, I think that might be part of it. Well, and better software makes better hardware. Sure. Yeah. And so, I mean, cause somebody has to program the CNC tools, which is, you know, one of the things I'm working on now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I think I think I mean that is that is definitely. <laughs> and and I mean one of the like, things that Nvidia does is create chips at a smaller mm -hmm. and smaller scale. I mean this is public mm -hmm. knowledge, and it is a good time to remind everyone that uh, nothing that I say represents my company in correct. any way. Um, at all. <laughs> Global Foundries, AMD, <laughs> Atmel, you know, I mean any number of companies that make make chips. Also, I mean, probably partially the result of software, if I had to speculate. All opinions are my own. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I assume so. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, we can edit that out if you want, if that's like no, terrifying no, to you. No, fine. Okay. I, I'm not terrified. I probably should just say that. I'm supposed to say that. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. fair. I mean, I, and I know that already. Yeah. I mean, I know people right. in the video that have different opinions than you. Yeah. I'd right. Like to yeah. Um, substantiate that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, as it should be. <laughs> should I mean, there's be. people in my work that have been to me, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. So, I mean, I, okay. And, and how much would we suck if we all had the same opinion? It would be pretty boring. The world <laughs> would be a boring place. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> no, it's 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 definitely fun to think about all these problems. And I and I and of course, like a lot of this sounds like waffling because I don't think anyone really knows what the answers are. But this is why, like. I think there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't know why. Why are they doing this thing with the with the robots, right? The, what they call it, like Tesla's thing, right? What's the advantage? And I mean, for me, any, any of this is exciting because I think that there are so many of these hardware issues that, yeah. like, I don't know. Hopefully, just throwing more things at the wall will have someone kind of find a good solution, right? Well, um, I, I'm kind of with you. Like, I'm like, maybe Elon can pull this off. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Like, who hopefully, knows, who knows? But like, if anyone yeah. can, it's that motherfucker. Yeah. And so it's it's an interesting good. thing. Yeah. Is it a good financial decision? I'm not qualified to say. Who the hell knows? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, but cool stuff. It's I mean, that was like Elon lighting up a joint on Joe Rogan, <laughs> and everybody gave him all this shit. Like, oh my god, yeah, the yeah. price is going to go to zero on the shares, and it's like, didn't. <laughs> <laughs>
Nobody really cares about weed anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. I yeah. don't oh, know. It's so weird. Yeah. But, yeah. Well. But uh, yeah. No, for sure. This this is fun. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think it, I do think like as much as I've been talking about all this stuff with like lack of precision being good and all this, I don't want to say that like the CNC kind of stuff that you do is not useful. No, I, I think care. there will I mean, always be places for that kind of robot too, right? So like, logic serves yeah. very niche markets like aerospace yeah. that aren't going anywhere. Well, and like there's all these industrial robots in factories, so that's never going anywhere either, right? Like all this stuff is always going to be useful. But I think that like what's exciting for me is thinking about what it would take to put a robot to an environment like this one, where we are surrounded by thousands. We are I mean, in a workspace that is surrounded. We are surrounded by hundreds of objects, right? That that's designed for robots to go into, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, but that you have this you have this nice environment here for the robots, but then outside, which is very clean and orderly, and then yeah. outside of that is just pure sheer chaos. But designed not to look orderly. <laughs> right. It's yeah. a fake disaster. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. Even with that, people would capsize the robots in that tunnel all the time. Yeah. Well, you also always have a human in the loop, right? So, like there are Well, like, yeah. the human in the loop was my ass in a suit. And I had to take off my suit, and I would lacerate my back on the old rip on there. <laughs> and I would have to go in, and oh, I would be all cut up by the end of the night, and then I would bleed and have to pay for dry cleaning on that. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, easier said than done. I mean, even still. So, right. I mean, there's room for improvement there. Right. And this is a nice segue into the, like, so people are always, like, uh, robot like worried about robots taking jobs and so on. It's either robots are never going to happen or they're going to take our jobs, right? Those are the, those are the <laughs> two standard opinions on robots, right? Because uh, like people have been telling me I have a robot butler for 50 years and people tell me that I shouldn't be a trucker because they're going to replace my job. And uh, both of you are probably wrong, right? Like there's stuff. So, you know, yeah. I don't know. Because, well, I'm really doing that more and more, right? Because yeah. like in grad school, I was so, uh, I have a splinter in my finger. I was yeah. so... Bear, uh, bullish on um, self-driving, like I thought we would have had it. Oh, I think we all were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I was part of that group. We thought, oh, this yeah, is gonna happen. I right? was, I was screaming it from the ledges. I was all like, the interesting problems are going to three years from now. Nope. We're all gonna have it. <laughs> like in 2014, I was like, we're gonna have it. <laughs> How hard can it be? Yeah, yeah. People do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. When, after I, think, yeah, yeah. Oh, I had that attitude like yeah. I, i've been there for a while well i was yeah i wasn't working in self-driving cars for like 2017 2018 and all and they were still like we feel i mean they, like i think that there really is progress being made on all these they're they're, they're like oh, for sure. I'm sure right i interviewed the ceo yeah. of locomation the other oh, day oh nice how'd that go yeah well yeah uh, good thing to talk about the next well, yeah, it went well i like yeah. him a lot um yeah. Yeah. His brother was one of my advisors in grad school, uh, yeah. Tekken Marchili, um, yeah. Shetton, Shetton, sorry, I should say. Uh, Shetton is the CEO. Uh, really yeah. nice guy. He he actually collects, like, and he's told me this after we cut the podcast, but <laughs> I wish he had said it on air because it was in, he collects vintage computers, so like um, Ataris and okay. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so Great. he's a super nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like to be a CEO of a robotic startup, you kind of have to be on some level. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah but... <laughs> Pilot form logic is definitely like that. The dude is, um, right. I mean, he worked at fucking Alta Vista for Christ's sake. You know, like, right. He's, uh, he's quite a nerd. And yeah. it, it's, it's fun when you meet somebody that's that generation that like lived through the dot com burst and worked at one of those. There's a bunch of them out there. And like, yeah. a bunch of them, most of them know each other. And so it's very interesting yeah. to get to know those guys. Any interesting stories from the dot com era? The... I mean, <laughs> crazy like i wasn't there so i don't know um and you know paul and i aren't that close i mean like we are but we aren't like i'm, I'm one of his directors so i mean he he likes me and believes in me and I'm, yeah. I'm very happy for that but i don't really know him that closely as an individual like i don't know him outside of our work personas that well yeah if that makes sense oh there was a yeah no that totally makes sense I don't know there there was a certain amount of like optimism about technology from like the, in the aughts and so on that I kind of that we don't really have anymore which I kind of miss <laughs> right like I feel like that's a I don't know and then I guess the dot com well, I think it's because just, of what happened that part of it yeah skeptical and there was also yeah there's that and then there's the other current things I guess it made people more cynical too I guess but yeah well, like what like the market I don't know yeah I mean I'm referring to I don't know. It's just a lot of things. Like, 
it's it feels like people are more cynical about technology and about accomplishing using these things to like actually accomplish things and do good and all of that right like i don't know can and i feel like there's some of it's right like it's good to be it's good to be critical because i feel like there are always going to be neg agree. negative um what if you're possibilities right you always you're have to total change. optimist yeah. then you're blind yeah but if you're a pessimist then you're a cunt and so there's a middle ground right for sure i mean where you know you're yeah. a realist right i mean i mean that's the ideal that's what you want to aim for i mean i think you can be an optimist without being a blind optimist right yeah i think that there are they like i think that there are all of these things that we that we talk about have a lot of potential to make the world better in various ways right i think you can make the world better through technology maybe not solely through technology but yeah that's the uh yeah but yeah Space, I mean, uh communist <laughs> 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 no it's it's interesting though i don't know yeah, yeah. um who's we saying anything i'm talking about a bunch of stuff yeah, um yeah. this is fun I, i'm actually really really enjoying this i feel like we found like a good cadence on this do you want to do this again <laughs> sure yeah yeah trying trying to get to 100 episodes or, or more what episode are you on right now this would be episode 42 that we're making right now nice. all right pretty good yeah 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 so um wait hold on let me check 43 that we're making right now <laughs> it's episode 43 nice so how long so, have you been making making your podcast well, now we release i release one every week okay so um what that means is 43 weeks of podcast well, 40 weeks, because episode 40 came out this week, so we'll have two recorded this week, and then it'll be the week and the week after that, which is, dude, you helped me get past, <laughs> now there's a backlog. Now there's a backlog, and I can, so you I can, can relax a bit. not crap my pants the next time somebody cancels. Yeah, yeah. nice. But, um, yeah, uh, been doing this for, I mean, about like three quarters of a year, a little longer. Nice. So, no, it's That's fun. Got some good guests. I don't think I'm going to stop making them. I mean, they're they're very yeah. fun to make. Even if nobody watches it. I was talking to a guy today uh, who's a um, anodization expert, and he goes by Captain Corrosion, which is hilarious. <laughs> okay. But he was like, um, I told him, I was like, I have a podcast. Where I talked to him, I was like, how many viewers do you have? And I'm like, I think we have like 43, 44 followers. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I'm not interested. I have 2 million <laughs> <laughs> he actually had two million. I'm like, dude. I'm... He's a he's a podcast of his own. Uh, apparently, he he makes oh. videos about anodization and surface chemistry. Oh, interesting. Okay, it, it's what we do at work lately, and so um, I'm just like, all right, man, I understand. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't have a podcast, so that's a. Uh... <laughs> I, I was looking at the internet and I found this guy and then I met with him and you know it went well. So cool. It's nice. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's kind of fun. It's fun just reaching out to these dudes. Like it, it's been enjoyable, like trying to learn about this new field and just yeah. trying to find the foremost experts of that field. Yeah. And then talk to them on the phone like a week later after you know like a bunch of <laughs> back and forth. And I mean that's that's enjoyable. Like it, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of well, it's a personnel challenge, right? Like you're like, how do I get this person to it's recruiting it's headhunting that's what i'm essentially doing right now right yeah yeah but it is exciting i mean it's it, it i've talked about hunting a lot at work lately i've been like oh yeah when i was on the hunt earlier today because <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. i've been I've gotta find the right expert i really want to build my team up more so i mean yep. it's, it's been fun uh, by the way if you know about corrosion <laughs> right it, podcast at ska.solutions <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um yeah no it, it's been really really enjoyable i feel like i've got an awesome position here where i have a chance to build something great and um it's it's kind of a blank canvas right i mean the job in texas that i didn't go for would have been me coming into a 29 person team and just taking over and and leading that where it was, I mean, this job is me coming into a zero person team, building it into whatever I want it to be. It's pretty exciting. So, yeah, it seems yeah, exciting. It's, it's, cool stuff. It's, it's a different thing. I mean, I, yeah. I feel like I'm either like the biggest douche in the universe, <laughs> or maybe I've got a modest, I don't know. But what I seem to opt for time and time again is taking less now for more later. 
Like, does that make sense? You know, like the like I'll I'll take a smaller team if I get to make it in my own image, or like I'll yeah. take less money if I can earn way more later on. And so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a totally natural thing to do to want to, I guess, especially on, about like having some I don't know control over what you're doing, having some like stake in it, right? I think that's always that's worth it, even if it's I don't know less in my opinion yeah I don't know. right i said that too so, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> no yeah. Feelings. right yeah it's uh what is it yeah right well like so for i mean uh, yeah like this is part of the calculus that goes into going to grad school and becoming a scientist right is like i would rather be able to have like look at interesting problems and not have to i don't know not like immediately make money i think that most of my friends who went right into right in the industry of course make as much as i do right? you know yeah. that is right yeah and then without the uh six years of making nothing not nothing yeah but, but very yeah. little yeah i mean it's yeah honestly it's a pretty good amount of money if you're in like, for baltimore for baltimore it's pretty good actually yeah. like for uh for all those all those kids going to grad school and uh what's it called go to baltimore <laughs> Right. All those kids going to grad school in like the Bay Area, though, I got to feel a little bit bad for them. But yeah, I think those are. I right, just know you don't have your headphones on. I'm not mad at you, but. Oh, was I supposed to have those on? The benefit of the headphones is you can hear how close to the microphone you are because you get feedback from your own oh, microphone. Oh, OK. Well, uh, it's all good. I mean, if you want to sneak them off. <laughs> OK. So it's kind of neat because well, when I went like this, like, hey, can you hear that? And yeah. it's like, all right. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> kind of interesting. Huh. Okay. Yeah, well, like see, making a gag. Saying, you not, see it. not an expert at the uh, being on a podcast here. So, no, oh, it's, it's, it's very good. strange to hear my own voice like this. Let's see. Yeah, but it's helpful because then you know what you sound like. You're like, okay, yeah. this is this is me now. Wow, well, I don't care for that. Yeah. <laughs> That was funny. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I like my, I, I used to hate it. Like when I was younger and I heard it, I'm like, ah, what the fuck do I sound like that? That's horrible. I'm gross. I should kill myself. And, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? It's it's all right. Get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like my voice. My voice is smooth. My voice is beautiful. Yeah. Um, or it's horrible and disgusting. I don't know. <laughs> but like I opt for the former. And if the latter ends up, I'll work on correcting it later. So. That's okay. it. I was an awkward kid, so I try to I try to be smooth if I can help it. <laughs> oh, I think we all were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw um ah, I saw a client's kids today and those were awkward kids. <laughs> so I said I think all kids are pretty awkward kids. Well that's it, right? Very so rough, yeah, it, it, it really made me think about it. And it was it was hilarious because these kids it's it's two boys that are maybe you know under the age of seven, and um, the one kid, um, so he was like going and like hanging out with like people. We were we were at a restaurant slash bar, and this kid like went over and was hanging out with like these two ladies with his brother, and I'm like, if those were men, this would be such a different dynamic right now. Can you imagine if like there were random dudes hanging out with like seven year old boys what that would look like or like you know one was like two or three and the other one was like maybe five like can you imagine the optics of that <laughs> uh, yeah. that was funny i'm, I'm sorry. maybe that's not pc i'm not trying to get counsel over know. here i feel like you shouldn't be i feel like it should be fine like i don't know most i don't know plenty of guys with kids too so. by the end of it the one kid was like jumping on this lady and she was like hugging him and patting him like it would look bad <laughs> like even if it isn't it would look bad like <laughs> i don't know all right, imagine like a 60 year old man like hugging a kid that's like patting him. Like and, a grand guy. And the kid's legs are like, in the air. I don't know, like a, you know, like it's a, a grandpa kind of guy like picking up a kid. I don't but know. But it, it's not the kid's grandpa. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like. Uh, I wouldn't care. I don't know. I think maybe maybe it would be weird, but I don't think it should be. That's, I'm I agree with that's you. my opinion on this. Yeah, that's, that, that's a good opinion. It's a good opinion. I, I, I identify. I, I agree. I think it's silly. 
but um i don't know i'm just speculating here maybe cool. yeah people probably wouldn't they probably wouldn't they would probably feel too awkward to do it if they were two guys <laughs> maybe that's sad i don't know yeah but like i can't admit a puppy's cute i can't hug a baby like i gotta stay over here because <laughs> i don't want to be accused of being a pedophile <laughs> that's basically it yeah i don't know uh, well obviously not <laughs> but, you know, it's... right i think we're good i we covered all the stuff pretty sure and then that's it that's all we want to talk about work at we're... pedophiles <laughs> 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 Yeah. Why well, should we everything on the list? All right. Embarrassing. Seattle. It's the other Seattle. One. Seattle yeah. work and pedophiles. Yeah. All right. That's everything on your to-do list. So. I mean, unless you want to cover, like, I'm, I'm down to keep going. <laughs> like, I'm not in a hurry to end it. I just. I mean, I don't know. I don't have anything in particular in mind here. This but... is twice as long as the last one we did. Oh, really? We well, can do another one that's four times as long. Oh yeah, look, it's an exponential rate, and then yeah. soon it'll just never end. World domination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Well, cool. all right. Well, praise Allah. Thanks for coming on. It's been a pleasure. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's fun. If you stuck around this long and you like what you've heard, please give us a like and smash that subscribe button, or smash that like button and give us a subscribe. We're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show. If you know anyone good, send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below. Thanks again for listening and please come to the next one.